hello guys welcome back to the channel today's video is a follow-up of the pattern drafting we did on this bustier pencil gown with a yoke neckline and handkerchief sleeves if you haven't seen that tutorial i'll leave the link in the description in today's tutorial i'll walk you through on how i assembled the pieces how i'm able to maintain the shape of the neckline of the yoke while working with a stretchy lace achieve a structured bustier and an overall neat finish of the garment so if you like to see how i achieved all these make sure to keep watching do not forget to like share and subscribe to the channel i have here six meters of ankara print and a meter of lace my lace has a bit of stretch i used roughly three meters to make this dress and i've gone ahead to cut out my pieces these are the pieces of the dress all cut out if you drafted the front and back panel of the skirt of the dress on the same pattern like me, this is how to place your pattern when cutting. For the front panel, I folded in the zipper allowance along the center front line, taped close the hip line and went ahead to cut out the fabric. Then after cutting, I measured from the side seam of the front panel to the side end of the pattern and mine measured 1.5 inches. Now the seam allowance I added is 1 inch, so I just trimmed off that half of an inch and blended it back into the hip line. For the back panel, I opened up the hip line, the zipper allowance and I went ahead to cut out my fabric. These are the pieces for the yoke. I used a non-stretch tool as the lining because the lace has a lot of stretch. This will help to maintain the shape of the neckline without it slacking. If I'm to pipe the neckline with a bias tape, because it stretches, I may not be able to control it to maintain the original shape of the neckline. So this is the method I use when I'm working with a stretchy lace fabric. I have ironed on a wording on the front bodies and a color interfacing on the lining. I will go ahead and join the front panels, so the dots on the back panel and on the skirt of the dress, and I will do the same with the lining. I have attached the front panels, sewn the dots and have given them a good press. You can see how the bustier is shaped already. I will be adding this burning to the lining along the seam line to help get that structured bustier. So I will tape the ends of the burning with a masking tape and I will be sewing after the half inch seam allowance which will be used to join the bustier to the yoke. So once I get to the waistline, that is before the joining allowance, I will cut off the rest of the burning and tape the end before finishing off the stitches. So guys, this is what it's looking like and this is how it will be placed in the bustier. So at this point, I was contemplating on adding another bone in across the bust point, which I later did. So I went ahead to attach the lace. I have gone ahead and pinned in place the lace on the front and back panels and I will attach with this straight stitch. I will also do the same for the lining. This is what my panels are looking like. I will go ahead and join the front and back panels at the shoulders and I will do the same for the lining. Please note that whatever I do on the main fabric, the same thing I do on the lining. So I may not be showing all the sewing of the lining. I have attached both panels at the shoulders. Next, I'm going to attach the skirt of the dress. So I'll go ahead and match up the dark lines on the front panel and pin in place. On the back panel of the skirt, I ironed on a collar interfacing along the slit and at the hem of the skirt for the front and back panel to define those places and give it that creepsiness. 
So I will go ahead and match up the dark lines as well, pin in place and attach with a straight stitch. So guys, I've attached the skirt of the dress and I've done the same for the lining. Next, I'm going to attach the zipper. Because my lace stretches, I have cut out this lightweight interfacing. I'm going to use it to stabilize the zip allowance on the lace to prevent it from stretching while attaching the zipper. I will take it to my ironing table and iron it on the zip allowance of the lace. The width of my zip allowance is 1 inch, but the width of the interfacing is 1.25 inches. The extra 0.25 inch is to help create that crease line. So guys, you can see the crease line. This line will serve as a guide while attaching the zip. I have attached the zip and you can see how the line matches. I also trimmed off the SS seam allowance to the width of the zip just along the legs. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the sleeves and stitch close the sides of the gown. For the lining, I finally decided to add another boning across the boss point for more structure. So I'll quickly do that and then attach the sleeves. So guys, I've done that. I've slightly caged the bustier. I think this method gave that structured fitting around the bust as you can see on my client. So the next thing I'm going to do is to attach the lining to the main dress. So with the right side of the gown to the right side of the lining, I'll go ahead and pin it, pin it in place. Before I go ahead to attach the lining to the dress, I just want to show you guys why I use a non-stretch tool to turn out the neckline when working with a stretchy lace. As you can see here, the tool has no stretch and you can see how stretchy the lace is. Personally, if I'm to pipe the neckline with a bias tip, I might end up getting a more wider neckline. Hence, I prefer to use a non-stretch tool for a better result. There are people who are good with bias tape on stretchy fabric, but this is just a method I use and I thought to share. I will go ahead and match shoulder points to shoulder and pin. Then the zip allowance point to zip allowance point and pin as well. Then I'll pin around the back neck curve. At the center front curve, you can see how stretchy that place is is definitely bigger than the front neck circumference so i will go in gently and feed it in to match with the tool and pin in place if you are new to this method i will suggest you base the neckline first to have more control before sewing just like what i'm trying to explain you can see that the neck width of the lace on this side is much wider than that of the tool if i'm to pipe this with a bias tape i might end up having a much wider neck width on this side than the other side but with this tool it will help keep everything in check i'll go ahead and attach with a straight stitch once i'm done attaching the neckline i will make short notches about two to three cuts at the center front curve to release that place and i'll top stitch the seam allowance to the tool So guys, this is what the neckline of the yoke is looking like. If you were not told, you wouldn't know that a tool was used as lining. So you might as well give it a try if you do not know of this method yet. I also went ahead and attached one of the sleeve and you can see that the joining allowance is hidden in between the lining and the main fabric. So I'm going to show you how I did that on this other sleeve. The first thing I did was to turn out the sleeve of the lining so that the wrong side faces the wrong side of the sleeve of the gown. Then I matched the front joining allowance of the lining to the front joining allowance of the dress and pin in place just the way you see me doing. I will continue pinning using the shoulder seam line as a guide to as far as I can get to the back armhole.
Once I'm done pinning, I will match up the joining allowance of the lining to the dress with pins around the armhole because that's where we'll be running our stitches. You can as well go in and baste this first with your needle and thread to make sure the seam line of the lining to the dress is on the same line. And once everything is in place, I'll go ahead and attach with a straight stitch and turn out the sleeve. So guys, I'm done sewing and you can see that the joining allowance is well hidden in between the lining and the main fabric. Then for this other side that we didn't get to while pinning, you will just pull out the fabric just like you see me doing and sew. Or better still, hand tack with your needle and thread but make sure to leave a small space to turn it out and voila, you have it nice and clean. The next thing I'm going to do is to attach the yoke to the bodies. So I'll pin it in place and attach with a straight stitch. I have attached the yoke to the bodies of the dress and I sewed on the joining allowance but at the point where we have the boning I moved my needle about 1 8 of an, of an inch away from the joining allowance and so so that when I turn my bodies to the right side it will lay nice and flat on that area. So guys this is what I meant and you can see that it laid nice and flat on that area. If you sew on the joining allowance at the point of the boning, when you turn to the right side it's going to be puffy. So I'll go ahead and top stitch the seam allowance to the lining. So guys I've done that, I've completely secured the yoke to the bodies and this is what it's looking like. I also went ahead and attached the lining to one side of the zip. To attach the lining to the zip on the other side, all you have to do is to just roll over the lining like so, with the right side of the lining to the right side of the gown, matching up the points of the lace to the lining to the point on the gown and on the waistline as well and pin in place. Once you have these points matched up correctly, you go ahead and attach with a straight stitch. Et voila, I have successfully attached the lining to the zip and you can see all important point matches. Next, I'm going to attach the lining to the hem of the dress. So I'm going to pin with the right side of the dress to the right side of the lining and attach with a straight stitch. I have attached the lining to the hem of the dress and I'm just stretching things out. Remember, your lining is always shorter than the length of your dress. I'm sure you know this already. The next thing I'm going to do is to stitch close the slits. I will go in from one side of the slit opening like you see me doing to stitch close the other end. I will straighten out the lining making sure they are properly matched with the dress, pin it in place and attach with a straight stitch. I have stitched close the slit opening guys and I'll go ahead and turn it out and this is what we have. Now to stitch close the other slit end, 
I have opened up the side seam on the side of the slit where we just stitch closed about 5 inches. I will go in from there as you see me doing to stitch close the other side of the slit opening. Once that is done, I will turn it out and give it a good press. And you can see how beautiful and neat this turned out. For that opening, you can run a tiny straight stitch to close it up. Or better still, you can hand tack and do an invisible stitch with your needle and thread to close up the opening. For now, I'll leave it open because I'll go in from there to secure the waistline of the lining to the trace for the front and the back panel. The last but not the least is to attach the handkerchief to the sleeve and this is how I turned my handkerchief with the lining. I place the right side of the lining to the right side of the handkerchief and stitch around the four corners. Then I notch round the four corners like you see me doing and turned it out. This is what it looks like. I will go ahead and give it a good press and attach to the sleeve. So I have stitched round the sleeve opening to have the lining and the sleeve in place. And I did the same round the circle on the handkerchief. I will go ahead and pin them together and attach with a straight stitch. I have attached the handkerchief to the sleeves. The circumference of the handkerchief was a bit bigger than that of the sleeve, so I gathered in the excess. Now to complete this dress, I will go in from that opening on the side seam and secure the waistline of the lining to the dress with short back tacks or short stitches on the front and back waistline. Then at the hip line, I will also attach the lining to the dress with a seam allowance pointing towards the center back. Once I'm done with the back tacks or short stitches, I'll close in the side opening and show us the final look. Do not forget to like and share the video. Leave all your questions in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in my next one. A bientôt!